you. God bless you this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall be glad and rejoice in it. I'm Pastor Tony Lee, the pastor of the Community of Hope AME Church, where everyone has a chance, and we are excited to be with you this morning. I know many folks are home because you had to stay in due to the coronavirus, weren't able to go to church. Our church had to close as a result of it, but I like the fact that uh, we always say at Community of Hope that we don't go to church. We are the church, and so everywhere we are, the church is right there, so we have a wonderful day uh, that's full of praise, full of worship, full of conversation, and we just want to be a blessing to you this morning. So I want to start off with a word of prayer, and then we're going to move on to all that God has for us. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you, God, uh, for the Sunday morning hope. We thank you, God, for what you're doing on this day, and we thank you, God, for how you're blessing your people wherever they are, whether they're watching us, God, from their kitchen or for their living room, God, on their phone or on their iPad or on their laptop. We thank you, God, the presence of the Lord is right there. So God, we thank you. Bless our time together because where two or three of us are gathered in your name. We're gathered over the internet and we believe that you will be in the midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know today we're calling this Sunday Morning Hope. That's this show. That's how we're rocking and rolling. And I have a special, uh, she's not a guest because she's homegrown, uh, that you can catch her every Sunday at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 12 noon at the Community of Hope AME Church. Uh, she is a musical artist on the Writer's Block Music Group, and she is somebody show enough for the kingdom. So I want you to help me to celebrate a Community of Hope's own praise leader, Sister Brittany Wright, as she comes to share with us in music ministry this morning. Bless the name of the Lord. Everybody now, woo, 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 woo. you say, come on, we're going to do this together. Everybody now, woo, 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 woo. you say, in the back one time, everybody now, woo, 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 woo. Y'all say, last time, everybody now, woo, 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 you say, here we go, said, I, I came, I came to bless the Lord, let me hear you now, I came, I came to bless the Lord, say, I, I came, I came to bless the Lord, let me hear you now, I came, I came to bless the Lord, let me hear you now, yes, Lord, say,
Ladies and gentlemen, that was Sister Brittany Wright, a writer's block music group and community of hope's own homegrown. And we're just so blessed uh, to have her with us. And I'm excited today uh, because today uh, that we are sharing in conversation and praise and in worship and prayer. Uh, I know everybody's at home watching, uh, but we are grateful to have you with us. And one, we want to thank God for all the community of hope members that are watching, but also we want to thank God any visitors that are watching. Uh, Y'all hit us up in the chat room and we'll be blessed to acknowledge your presence. And we're just honored to have you visiting with us today. Now today uh, we want to uh, move in a series that we've been talking about. We've been talking about a series of Community of Hope during this Lenten season called Lifestyle Matters. And I'm excited to have two amazing folks to sit and chop it up with me uh, about this Lifestyle Matters series um, as Reverend Bill Lee and Reverend Dr. Nancy Lee are here with us in the building. And I'm just yeah. so grateful to God to have them here. Reverend Bill Lee, the, assi uh, the, the assistant pastor here at Community of Hope, and Reverend Dr. Nancy Lee, uh, my mama and the executive Executive Minister. Hey, My folks. Mama, what's up? How y'all doing? Mom, you're looking real beautiful right there. Looking good over there. And, and, and Rep. Say... Bill, you're looking like you're supposed to be on NFL Live. Oh, like you about to, you I know. Feel like Shannon Sharp up here, dog. Shannon Sharp in the house, oh, man. Oh. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> but, 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 you know, we've been talking about this whole thing about lifestyle marriages and why it's important uh, to not just talk about it. During the Lenten season, folks oftentimes uh, talk about the stuff they're giving up, uh, but they uh, really don't always connect it to the lifestyle that they're living. And, and, and so I just want us to kind of talk a little bit, especially in this coronavirus kind of a situation in which we're dealing with this uh, national pandemic, uh, that, that this worldwide pandemic, um, that uh, if there's ever a time you can see how lifestyle matters, it even has a shift in how, uh, uh, how we're doing social distancing. We're not uh, hugging each other. We're not shaking each other's hands because we understand that some of those practices can influence and can yeah. uh, end up uh, hindering us or making us more contagious or more susceptible to the virus. Uh, it, as you all think about kind of lifestyle matters and some of the areas uh, that can have an impact on our Christian journey, uh, or what would you kind of talk about? Um, and especially you, Mom, as, as you're dealing with us, we're dealing with these health issues uh, and some of the work we're doing at Community of Hope around health issues. Uh, what would you want to say kind of around this? Well, one of the areas that is really just, this is so significant that we're dealing with this uh, uh, virus at this time, and we're still working with heart disease, mm -hmm. one of the number one killers in the United States, and one of the number one killers and causes of uh, strokes in the African-American female. Mm -hmm. So the American Heart Association, along with the Weight Watchers, got together mm -hmm. and decided that they would do a pilot program. And we are one of the ones who are part of this pilot program. 58, 54 churches, but out of the 54, 36 were selected. And Community of Hope is one of eight in the DMV. That's wonderful. Now, to talk a little bit about this partnership, what actually happens? People come to classes or they get some online classes, that kind of stuff? What, right now, we, in fact, we're, getting, we're going to transition because of the virus. But initially, it's a 12-week course, mm -hmm. one week of uh, one hour mm -hmm. presentation. Okay. And the presentations are already selected by the American Heart Association. Such subjects as diabetes, heart uh, attacks, mm -hmm. ca cardiac arrest, strokes. Um, and we go into this with our members who have already signed up. And because we had to transition to another location, we now are presenting this at the Hemingway, and one, one, one of the uh, areas that is of uh, most concern right now is cardiovascular disease. Shout out to Hemingway Memorial AME Church, AME, Dr. Gerald Holson, uh, holding it down. Yeah, yeah. Now, Reverend Bill, I, I know that you, you, know, you like to work out and it's a part of your lifestyle, but how, how, how has physical fitness uh, helped and empowered you? I, I think the biggest thing we have to realize is, you know, especially as we're going through this whole uh, coronavirus, that uh, exercise is important. It helps to strengthen your immune system. Um, and it helps to really, for me, it's even a stress reliever. It's one of those things I found myself doing with all that we do in ministry. You know, I think it's important that exercise is a part of our regiment, um, but not just in ministry, just in general, uh, you know, to our members and to, you know, the body of Christ. How can you uh, be an effective minister or help to serve the kingdom if you're always sick? 
you know, and so exercise is one of those things that I've uh, committed myself to. And it's, and people ask me all the time, they're like, oh, Rev, you do it because you like it. I hate exercising, like real talk. If I didn't have to exercise and could be healthy, then I wouldn't exercise. But I think it's important in understanding that those are one of those things you do, you commit yourself to because you want uh, a healthy lifestyle because lifestyle matters. That's wonderful. And so, Mom, uh, talk a little bit, because you have a nursing background. I mean, you used to teach at Howard a School of Nursing. Shout out H.U. H.U. Um, you H. Don't you know? <laughs> you know. You sure not know. <laughs> That's right. it, it, but talk a bit about, even from a nurse's standpoint, and, and, and even why it's important uh, for folks to take care of themselves and to take seriously, even this coronavirus kind of thing, especially those who are elderly um, who are getting up in age. And, and you notice that they are... They are, are targeting those who are diabetics mm -hmm. or have hypertension, mm -hmm. who are elderly. Mm -hmm. Diabetes being number uh, one out of 300 million mm -hmm. Americans are attacked by diabetes. Mm -hmm. And so it's important because if we don't take care of this temple, which is what the American Heart Association, that's why they got the faith-based churches to come into this. Mm -hmm. If we don't take care of the temple that God has given us, then we are not being good stewards of our lives. Right now, if we just stop and realize we have the ability to make a difference. You don't have to end up being obese. You don't end up having end, have to end up with your diabetes going out of control. Those are things you have control over. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't have any control over whether or not you were born uh, in a family that had a history of diabetes or whether or not um, someone in your family experienced a heart attack. Those are things that you can't deal with. But because we have the ability to control certain areas of our lives, we need to look at it. Uh, cholesterol, uh, hypertension, uh, how you eat, how you exercise. Mm -hmm. Exercise is considered one of the biggest ways in which to control many of the areas that give us the most, uh, most difficulty. Uh, and, and I find it interesting that many of the leading uh, causes of death in the black community um, are things that are preventable. Um, are exactly. things that are preventable by lifestyle shifts and lifestyle choices. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I'm grateful for both of you kind of sharing with us and us talking. I really wanted to have, especially uh, with the coronavirus kind of shutting down regions in the area, I felt it was important for us uh, not just to talk about lifestyle matters around sin, uh, but talk about how lifestyle matters around our health mm -hmm. and how uh, we can be deal with relevant issues and issues that are central uh, to us just living well and we can live well because God wants us what, to, to prosper. But prosperity isn't just about money, but prosperity is about your life and yeah, your health, health and your yeah. strength. And, and so in that, though, Reverend Bill, I know that we've been uh, kind of also talking about uh, 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 not just kind of our health, but also our spiritual walk and our spiritual talk um, and, and kind of what it means to study strong. Right, right. Well, I think the thing that's interesting as we're talking about uh, the coronavirus, but also with uh, Reverend Doctor talking about uh, this whole heart disease, uh, there's a scripture that comes to mind, Psalm 1911 says, I have hidden your word in my heart uh, that I may not sin against you. So it's interesting that we're talking about heart, but it's also understanding, and y'all know uh, Community of Hope, uh, we are study strong. You know, we say it every Sunday, we're study strong. Uh, we talk about scriptures of the week and how important it is to be study strong. And I just want to remind y'all, listen, just because you're not at church and we in it, you know, at the skate palace that we still need y'all memorizing your scriptures. Last week's scripture was 1 Peter, uh, the fifth chapter, verse six, uh, humble yourselves, uh, therefore, un uh, under God's mighty hand, uh, that uh, your life may uh, lift up in due times. And so we got to remember that, 1 Peter 5, 6. So if you didn't get it last week, you got it this week. And this week's scripture of the week, and I need y'all to remember this, Matthew 6, 21, Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. We are study strong, y'all. And y'all know if you memorize your scriptures, y'all already know. I got to dance for you, y'all, because y'all know how. If you got if you got the scripture, I got to dance. Uh, so make sure you get your scriptures locked in, especially during this time uh, that you need to keep your promise, uh, the promises of God locked in. And so even when you're going through 
uh, these type of situations, this this situation that we're going through is in, in this world, that you always remember that even though we're in the world, we're not of the world. And God gives us promises that we can hold to, and you got to keep those promises in your heart. Love y'all. Sunday morning hope and I am just so excited sitting here with my sister one of the praise leaders at community of hope who has just blessed us so tremendously a sister Brittany Wright Brittany Rev, thank you for having me you this can morning. sing 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 <laughs> and we get to hear you every single Sunday morning this is my church home every single Sunday morning and we are so grateful to God to have you now uh, f folks may not know about you uh, tell folks just a little bit about you where you're from what you've done well I'm from Cleveland but I, I moved here to go to Morgan <clears throat> almost 20 years ago and uh, I've been praise and worship leader at Community of Hope for, this year makes nine years. Wow. I've been at Community of Hope. 
Um, and I have been blessed to sing with a lot of artists and work and learn under their tutelage. And I have a couple albums and um, my third on the way. Um, I've been blessed to sing with people like um, Jonathan Nelson and uh, J.J. Harrison and Anthony Brown and, um, uh, geez, James Fortune. Uh, just, just really be able to sit under and learn and glean and, and, and grow from these people. And I'm just excited what they have imparted and excited for what God is doing uh, with Writer's Block and the next album. And I'm excited about it. It was live and I, I feel good, Rev. <laughs> now, uh, tell me a little bit about Writer's Block. So Writer's Block is a company uh, founded by Philip Bryant. Shout out Philip Bryant, <laughs> music minister, Community of Hope, yeah, AME Church. Yeah, Community of Hope. Shameless um, plug, shameless plug. <laughs> um, he is an uh, executive producer of my album. I had a lot of people that were a part that wrote on the album. Um, Jamon and uh, Forrest and Philip Hall wrote on the album. Um, Miranda Curtis um, was a feature on the album, and Philip was the vocal producer for the album, and I also hope to co-write everything, and... Um, you know, he, this is my second album with Philip, and I mean, right now he's overdoing something because he's always working. So I'm, I'm just grateful for the, the next album that's coming, and, and, and grateful for the opportunity to worship with him every week too. So God is good. Well, let me ask you this: <laughs> what, what gives you the burn, the desire? I've watched you. I've watched how. Every Sunday, I'm talking about every single service, you come to just totally give God glory. I mean, you just come to really set the house right um, in worship and praise. What is it um, that has caused you to have that burning to serve the Lord in that kind of a way? I mean, you know, Rev, I grew up in church, um, PK, preacher's kid, um, but uh, I'm a preacher's kid, but it wasn't until I moved away from mom, moved away from dad, and had the chance to have my own experiences and my own uh, testimonies that I was able to seek out and learn who God was for myself. Um, and that's a whole different type of relationship than hearing about it than it's, and then experience it and experiencing his relationship for yourself. Um, and it was just growing up and being groomed in this, that it was like certain scriptures stick with you and you have to sing them and you mean them and you digest them. I will bless the Lord at all times. That means when things are great in my life, that means when things are stressful in my life, that means when it feels like everything is just complete calamity, I still have to give God praise because he's worthy of that. Like it's not any goodness of my own, but you know, God loved me in spite of who I was. He loved me in spite of everything that I did and his blood paid the ultimate price of the least that I could do. Um, no matter what I'm dealing with is to give his name glory and lift him above whatever it is that I'm dealing with. Now you've been working really hard in the music business. The Lord has blessed you and just put you on significant stages and platforms and you've got this new project coming out. What one word would you give somebody who feels like they have a gift but doors don't seem to be opening, ways don't seem to be making made, and, and, but they feel like they have something they want to share mm -hmm. for the Lord, something they want to do, they believe can bless the world. What word would you share for them? Um, persevere. <laughs> I, I would say push through. I would say push through it. I would say pray through it. I would say fast through it. Um, a lot of people will tell you no. A lot of people will, but a lot of people don't know the promise that God has given you. Um, so you can't go off of people's, people's word or people's opinion or what people may think of you, but God has the final say. If you trust what God has given you and, and you believe his word for your life, follow it. Persevere. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Brittany Wright, one of my favorite people, one of my <laughs> favorite singers. And I am now. I told her, and I've told you, and I'm gonna say it now that we're on the, the TV now as well, so it can be on record. Uh -uh. That I believe this album is gonna be amazing. It's gonna blow up. God's gonna use it to just touch all kinds of folks. Uh, there's one track you're missing uh, that you didn't do in the live recording that you need uh -oh. to go into the studio and do. <laughs> it, it'll be a guaranteed Grammy um, if you do a duet with me, um, right? I, 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 Philip Bryant owes me an album. Um, I'm calling him out right here on, on the TV. Um, but letting all y'all know, if y'all would let me sing, 
uh, the, it's a guaranteed Grammy. Now, I think it's already going to get a Grammy, but it would be like guaranteed super platinum. platinum. I, I, yeah. I get a feature. <laughs> I, I know you got Miranda Curtis, and that's nice. We that's nice. Miranda. You know, she's a she's a nice singer, <laughs> but but my skill set is just so. I'm so, I'm just playing Miranda. Please, please, I'm just playing. <laughs> Look, y'all, th you all have got to check out her stuff. Uh, uh, Brittany Wright, she is one of not just the most wonderful singers and praise leaders, one of the nicest people you will ever meet. It has been a consistent blessing at Community Folk. We appreciate you. I appreciate we you, We love Brad. you. Thank and you. And for the last nine years, you have just been so faithful, and we're just so grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank God, uh, not just for what's happening in this place, uh, but also I was really blessed last week uh, to see how the Lord really used my brother to share a word at Community of Hope. And, and it was something he also wrote a little bit later during the week. And so I just wanted to share a piece of worship of Reverend Bill Lee, the assistant pastor of Community of Hope AME Church. I hope this blesses you, and then he'll be able to share with you himself personally. God bless you. So God, in Jesus' name, had your way. Had your way. God, in Jesus' name, in this moment, speak to us individually. To that there is a specific thing, that there is a secret thing, that there is a private thing. God, speak in individually, God, to us. God, speak to us in a way that when we leave here, all we'll dare to say is, God was talking to me this morning. But then, God, I thank you, God, that we don't come just wanting to be blessed ourselves. But, God, we thank you for a collective blessing. Speak to us in a way, God, that we feel it as a whole. God, that we know that we are the community of hope, God. God, we thank you, God. The building is not the church. We the church. God, we thank you. That whether we step, the church just stepped. God, when we go to our jobs on Monday, the church is at our job. When we get on the metro on Monday, the church is on the metro. God, that when we go to the grocery store, God, that the church is in the grocery store. God, that wherever we are. <laughs> We are the church. So speak to us individually, collectively, in this moment, God. We thank you. God, we thank you. Thank you, God, for those who are in the house. We thank you, God, for those who are out of the house watching on stream. God, God, allow them to feel the same power we feel in here. God, allow them to feel it in their bedroom, feel it on their job, feel it in their car. God, that wherever they are right now, God, we thank you, God. The same power, the same peace, the same love, the same joy, the same forgiveness, the same grace, the same mercy. It's right where they are. Now, God, in Jesus' name, have your way. And we'll be sure to give your name all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name, God, we want to say thank you. In Jesus' name, I dare you to give God a praise like it's the last praise you got. Have your way. No, I said I dare you to give God praise like it's the last praise you got. Have your way. Like this is all you got to get. This is it. This, if this was your last praise, is it? If this was your last praise, is it? If this was your last praise, Bless you, community of hope. Listen, uh, you all know that on last Sunday, for those who were there, that we were uh, praying and we were believing for a miracle. Uh, and it is sad to say that the miracle that we were praying for, it did not take place the way that we wanted it to. Um, many of you all may already know, and for those who don't, uh, one of our 12-year-old soldiers, Namir Copeland, uh, who's literally been battling cancer for a third of his life. Uh, he went home to be with the Lord on Tuesday. Uh, and definitely we are sad and bad. We are praying for his family. We are praying for all of those. And I even want to thank each and every one of you all who mentioned his name in prayer at least one time. Uh, and we were believing for his complete healing. Uh, that we know that he is now uh, with the Lord. And, and it's interesting because a week prior, I was at the hospital with uh, Namir and his mother and uh, had gotten some bad news. And even as an assistant pastor and as a minister of the gospel, uh, this stuff, it, we're still human and it hits us. And I remember leaving out and uh, I was kind of disheartened. I was discouraged. 
Uh, but in that moment, God shared something with me, and I shared it on uh, social media, and I wanted to make sure that I had a chance to read it to you all. And it really deals with our faith and what it means to have faith. And so I just want to read what I shared. Uh, the lifestyle of the Christian is determined and defined by their faith. Faith is not some whimsical thinking or a fairy tale belief. Faith is the muscle of the Christian that is able to endure, grow, and stretch in the face of adversity, struggle, and conflict. Our faith is not found in the testimony, but our faith is found in the test. Our faith is not found in the, in the sunshine, but it's found in the storm. Our faith is not found in the assurance of knowing, but it's found in the doubt of uncertainty. Our faith is not found where everything works out, but our faith is found when nothing seems to be working at all. Our faith is not found in the answer. It's found in the delays and even in the denials. Faith is not found at the end of the journey, but faith is found along the traveling path to our destination. Faith is found when our hands are slipping because we, but we grasp to keep from letting go. Faith is found seconds away from wanting to be angry with God, but still mustering a praise on our lips and in our hearts. Faith is found when, when we thought what should be was the exact opposite of what we asked for. Faith is in our ability to find life in death, joy in sadness, love in hate, strength in weakness, and power in pain. Faith is truly found in our belief that all things really do work together for good. And so this, today I really just wanted to encourage and remind all of us, including myself, that no matter what valley we may be in, it is our faith that becomes the compass to guide us back to mountaintops of hope and love. Listen, y'all, whatever you do, and I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who feels like they're at their wits end. I don't know who feels like they're ready to give up. I don't know who feels like that what you're going through is just too much. If God gave it to you, you can handle it. And the one thing you can't do, don't lose your faith. Right where you are, with tears in your eyes, with hurt in your heart, still stand on God's word and know that God will never leave you and God will never forsake you. Stand in and on your faith. Father, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for dying in our place. grateful today. <laughs> we are grateful. We can never repay you. Thank you, Jesus. I want to see you like you see me, not like I am now, but what I'm going to be. What I need you to do is show me how to let it go Because you knew my heart, you've always been in control Oh, there's not too many ways to say I love you And even fewer ways to show its meaning One day you said
but I know I should. On the cross you stayed just for my good, to pay a price I never I don't know about you, but I thank God for Calvary. Thank you so much for that, Sister Brittany, and for reminding us the power and the importance of Calvary. My brothers and sisters, uh, that I want to share a scripture with you in 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, at the 12th verse. Uh, it says, for as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where... <laughs> Where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now have God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it had pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? I want to remind you, uh, this scripture is important. I think it's significant because even as we are dealing in this time of navigating this coronavirus, what you've got to understand is the virus attacks the body. Uh, I, and I don't want you to uh, think about the fact that uh, just because it may attack the lungs, it's not impacting the whole body. But if it attacks one part of the body, it's impacting the whole body. Uh, I want you to understand that uh, somebody there, uh, wherever you are, whether you're in your bedroom, you're living living room, your kitchen, or the, wherever you're watching us from, uh, some of you feel like you're being attacked right now. I know it may not be by the coronavirus, but you feel like you're being attacked in your life. Uh, you feel like there's some challenges going on in your situation. Uh, you feel like there are haters attacking you, attacks on your job, that you feel like there's an attack to you. And I want to let you know as a part of the body of Christ that when you're attacked, we're all attacked. Uh, that just when the coronavirus uh, attacks the lungs, it's really attacking the whole body. It would be crazy for the foot to not be worried about the virus uh, because the virus is impacting the rest of the body. It would be crazy for me that because you're being attacked uh, that I'm not concerned about the attack that's happening to you. Uh, but I'm concerned about every attack on you. I'm concerned about the attacks on your family, the attacks on your finances, the attacks on your health. And I've come by to let you know that we have come to fight the fight for the whole body to be taken care of. Uh, that's why I don't have the time to gossip about anybody in the kingdom because we're all a part of the same body. That's why I can't root against you because we're all a part of the same body. That's why I don't get excited when you fall because we're all a part of the same body. And I need you to win because when you win, we win. Uh, so my brothers and my sisters, I've come by to tell you 
I need you to survive. You need me to survive because we're all a part, what? Of the same body. And so being a part of the same body, when there's an attack on the body, when sin attacks the body like a virus, I want to thank God that there's some things that can be done uh, to be able to protect us against sin. If we learn anything about coronavirus, uh, we learn the importance of social distancing. Uh, that there's sometimes, there's some places and some people you don't need to hang with uh, because they're contaminated, because you're concerned about uh, you catching what they've got. I've come by to talk to somebody to let you know that in this season in your life, it may be a need for some social distancing. There may be some DMs that you don't need to be creeping up into. There may be some folks you don't need to follow as much anymore. There may be some places you don't go as much anymore. The old saints used to say, the places I used to go, I don't go no more. The things I used to do, I don't do anymore. Uh, that's called social distancing. Uh, in order to deal with a virus, uh, that sometimes you need to get a vaccine. And when you get a vaccine, a vaccine takes a little bit of the sickness puts it into something and puts it in you to help you to develop immunity. Now, I've come by to let you know that none of us have immunity to sin because we are all sinners saved by grace. But I'm grateful to know there's been a vaccine and it's called the blood of Jesus. I'm grateful to know that the CDC set up a headquarters on a hill called Calvary over 2,000 years ago. And what you've got to understand about a vaccine is that a vaccine for one illness uh, has to be different for another illness. So the same thing that works for coronavirus uh, is not necessarily what will work for the flu. The same thing that works for the flu may not be what works for measles. And so the challenge of that is that when God needed a vaccine for sin, uh, that God couldn't send just one kind of vaccine uh, and deal with one kind of sin to deal with your situation or mine. In other words, that my sins are different than your sins and your sins are different than someone else's sins. Uh, but God needed Jesus to take on every single kind of a sin. Because when God took on sin, when Jesus took on sin, that Jesus' blood became the vaccine for us all. And I'm so glad that the old song used to say that it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day shall never lose its power. For what can wash away my sins? But nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? It's nothing but the blood of Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, when there's an attack on the body of believers, we've got to remember that Jesus Jesus can handle it all. So I don't need you to get shook. I don't need you to get scared. I don't need you to let the coronavirus send you into depression because I know a God that sits high and looks low and Jesus paid the price for it all. And with that, and because Jesus paid the price for it all, if you've never accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life, we want to give you that opportunity today. We thank God that we have folks all in our chat rooms that have been talking with you, chatting with you. If you've never accepted Jesus at Community of Hope, we say something every single Sunday morning. We say we're the Community of Hope where everyone has a chance. We don't care who you are, what you've done, or who you did it with. We don't care if you did it last night or woke up doing it this morning. But when you get to the house of the Lord or when you watch the house of the Lord. And when you are online with us, you're in the right place at the right time to become all that God has called you to be. And so I believe that right where you are, God's got a blessing with your name slam on it. If you've never accepted Jesus, the Bible says that God loved the world so much, he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I love that scripture because it does not say for God so loved the churches. It does not say for God so loved the saints. It says for God so loved the world and all of its mess and all of its challenges. In other words, God loved you so much that God sent Jesus. Jesus would not come down from the cross. He should have come down. If it was me, he probably would have come down, but he would not come down from the cross. Even though he could have come down, he decided to die just to save you and to save me. If you've never accepted Jesus, never given your heart to Christ, uh, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you can, you shall be saved. If you've never accepted Jesus and want to give your heart to the Lord today, uh, just right there, right where you are. Uh, just click right there uh, in that comment area. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to give my life to Jesus. And one of our folks will connect with you. They'll get your information. They'll pray with you. If you need a church home, uh, you can get connected to Community of Hope and we'll reach right back out for you. Uh, that We worship uh, at, at, the, at, the, at the Skate Palace uh, right there on Branch Avenue, 8, 10, and 12 o'clock. As soon as we get back, we'll be looking for you because we'll be blessed to have you be a part of the fellowship. Uh, and, 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 and we'll be honored and privileged to have you as a part of the body of believers.
Now, my brothers and my sisters, our time is almost up, and it's time to go. If you'd like to be a blessing to this ministry, if you'd like to give, I thank God, Community of Hope, you can give online. It's shown right there um, on your screen how you can give online. You can give on the Givelify app, typing in Community of Hope. You can give on Cash App, a, a dollar sign, give COH. That any way you want to give, we'd be blessed to have you be able to give with us on today. We'd be honored for you uh, to be able to not just feel like you can stick at home and the work of the church doesn't have to keep on moving, uh, but let your tithe, let your offering uh, meet us right here uh, as you give online. We believe that God's got a great work for us to do, even in this period of transition. We thank God for all that God is doing as we're moving to our promised land, and we are believing by faith that you shall keep on being faithful in your giving, uh, just as God has continued to be faithful to you and your living. And before I go, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you right where you are, that God will bless your family, that God will bless your household. And we just want to lift up everyone today as we move forward into this day. Y'all have a blessed, blessed week. And we believe that God has God's best for you this week. Let me pray for you. God, in Jesus' name, I thank you for everyone watching us today. I thank you, God, for your hand on their lives. I thank you, God, for your grace into their lives. But most of all, God, I do thank you that I believe, God, even in trying situations, that you are there with us. God, in Jesus' name, I pray against depression. I pray against frustration. I pray against fear. I pray right now in the name of Lord Jesus against the coronavirus, and I pray, God, health and healing for this nation. God, I pray, God, for the leaders of this nation. I pray that you would give them wisdom wisdom and insight. You would give them, God, the ability to do the right thing in the name of Lord Jesus. And I'm praying, God, that you, God, shall stem the tide of a pandemic. It's a pandemic to the world, but I thank you, God, that you can turn it all around. So, God, grab a hold of not this, this nation, but grab a hold of this world, God. And you, God, touch, God, all that are grieving, all that are hurting, all that are sick. And we're believing, God, for your Holy Ghost healing power to touch, God, this world. Now, God, I also pray a special prayer for the Copeland family, the family of young brother Namir Copeland, who are grieving the death of that young 12-year-old. God, touch, God, that family. Touch the whole community of Hope Church family as we grieve that young brother. And God, we're believing to have a Holy Ghost, a celebration of his life and homegoing celebration for him. Now, God, in Jesus' name, uh, bless, God, your people. Bless them in their houses. Bless them on their jobs. Bless them them and their families and their finances, but most of all, God, let them know your hand is on them and you are with them wherever they go. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide now henceforth and forever among these your people. In other words, God, may you walk with us, may you talk with us, may you live in us that we can live for you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Y'all have a blessed week. God bless you. We love you, and y'all come on out and visit us. And if we don't have church next Sunday because the governor keeps it shut down, uh, then we're going to have something else right there for you because we have come to be a blessing to you uh, in this season. God bless you, and we out. Said I